And we continue with our mathematical finance session, and it's really my great pleasure to introduce Kanya, Kanya Riga, who will speak about pathwise computation of the gain of trading strategies and robustness of delta hedging. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I hope to be able to clearly explain the, the topic, even if it's uh, more mathematical. Uh, where is the... So it's a joint work with uh, Rama Conte. And uh, okay, the, the outline, I will, uh, first of all, I will give you the motivation, uh, which arises from the classical approach in mathematical finance. And uh, I, I need uh, also to introduce you the notation because we use uh, a, quite recent uh, type of calculus uh, that uses uh, different notations. So for the ones of you that uh, don't know it, uh, I need to, to explain the notation and the basic results. And, um, and then I will, my talk uh, will involve two parts. So in the first part, we, um, we will deal with the um, non-probabilistic replication of path-dependent path options in the sense that we will build, uh, we build a analytical framework, analytical financial model, where the gain uh, of trading strategies is computable uh, path-wise, so we don't have uh, a probability space. Um, and then we will, uh, we will perform um, a robustness analysis, still path-wise, so we will... Uh, analyze the performance of a model, but uh, with respect uh, to the real world. Um, and then I will give you a few common examples. So, in the classical modeling in mathematical finance, uh, we always start from a stochastic process, which uh, models the, um, the dynamics of the stock prices in the market and it is assumed uh, generally as a semi-martingale on some filtered probability space. Then what we do, we, we make the common assumptions uh, that are no arbitrage, no arbitrage opportunities or the, the weaker hypothesis of no free lunch with vanishing risk or with, without vanishing or, um, or bounded risk. And uh, this uh, is equivalent to the existence of a risk intermeasure. Then um, another common assumption is completeness of the model, which, uh, which is equivalent to the uniqueness of the risk neutral measure. Then with this assumption, what we do is uh, the pricing of derivatives as uh, an expectation under the risk neutral measure of the payout. And uh, then we build the... Um, a self-financing replicating uh, trading strategy where the relation we see here is the self-financing uh, relation and uh, the portfolio replicates the payout at maturity. But uh, here, uh, which issues uh, arise? So firstly, the, the gain. the gain um, of the self-financing replicating portfolio is given by a stochastic integral with respect to the semi-martingale. But this is a, a probabilistic object which is defined um, as a limit in probability, so it doesn't have uh, a meaning pathwise. We cannot compute it pathwise. Uh, so we, we model the gain as a stochastic process, but uh, we don't know which is our gain for each uh, state of the world. So this is a, an issue that arises, and we, to, to deal with it, we, we build an analytical financial model where we define uh, trading strategies, and we find that uh, a particular class of trading strategies uh, make, uh, make it possible to compute the gain uh, pathwise. In particular, it will be a limit of, uh, of Riemann sums. 
Then another issue is the, is the, the risk uh, of the model, which is known an, uh, as a night and uncertainty. In particular, for example, the robustness analysis that we find in the literature involve always uh, the comparison uh, between two models, one misspecified and one true model. So what we do is to analyze the robustness of the model uh, used by the hedger, which uh, the, the hedger has to, com to use the model to, in order to compute the prices and to, to build the trading strategies. But uh, we will anal analyze the performance with respect to the real uh, trajectory of prices. So I will uh, introduce the notation. So we will, um, we will give, uh, no, we will fix uh, a sequence uh, of time partition uh, between zero and capital T, and time partitions that are increasing, and so the, the step go, goes to, to, to zero. And um, if we take a Cadillac function, x, we will say that it has a finite quadratic variation along pi if uh, the squares, the sum of the squares of increments along the partition has a finite limit. And the limit uh, is called uh, the quadratic variation of x at t. And uh, in this case, uh, it holds also the Lebesgue decomposition, which separates its continuous part in the pure jump part. Then there is an extension to the bidimensional case. And we denote by Q of pi the set of Cadillac functions that have uh, finite quadratic variation along pi. OK, so then. If we consider a Cadillac function x and uh, at any time, we will denote uh, x of t as the value of x at time t, while we will denote uh, x of t um, as the stop the path of x in t, which means uh, simply that uh, we will consider the path of x up to t and then we prolong its value in t up to capital T. Then um, x t minus, we will uh, just stop uh, at its left limit and prolong it. And then for each uh, vector delta, we denote uh, x uh, delta t as the stopped path at t. Um, plus a jump of size uh, delta, in which case uh, here we are in one dimension, there we are in RD, but it's the same. And then we take the, and then we prolong up to capital T. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, and then we call a non-anticipative functional, a family of functional, uh, which is adapted to, to the canonical filtration. So the functional ft is uh, measurable with respect to the um, sigma algebra generated by, um, by the, um, the canonical process up to t. And then, uh, yes, we can, uh, we can think of f as a map on the space of the couple of the couples t x t, that is the, the space of stopped paths. 
which is a complete metric space if we keep it with, uh, with this metric, which is uh, actually is the, the sup norm of the difference of the two stopped paths plus the distance in time. And then some regularity notation, just to understand what we assume in the following results. So the functional, uh, it is said to be continuous and fi at fixed times if it continues with, with respect to the subnorm. And it is uh, left continuous if um, for each uh, stopped path, if we take another stopped path, which is stopped prior to, to the other one, the, the functional, um, the difference in the value of the functional is small. And uh, is bounded in its preserving if um, for each compact set, uh, if it exists um, a constant which bounds the, the value of the functional for each uh, path whose imagine is inside the compact. Okay, then the differentiation. So the, the functional, uh, the non-anticipative functional is said to be horizontally differentiable if uh, um, considered a, a path stopped at t, we compute the functional at time uh, t plus h, uh, still on the path stopped at t, and then the functional at time t, and then uh, we divide by, by h uh, and, go, and go to the limit. Then we, um, we define the vertical derivative instead as the derivative with respect to a jump. So we compute uh, the function at time t of the path stopped at t, but with the jump of size h, and then the function at time t with the stopped path. And then, uh, okay, the difference, we divide by h and we go to the limit. Uh, then we will, we will denote uh, CB1K, but actually we will use uh, C12 as uh, the space of uh, functionals, which are horizontally derivatives, and uh, K times vertically de derivat de differentiable. And uh, the derivatives are boundedness preserving. Okay, so the, the basic result that we will exploit is the functional Ito formula, which extends the, the Ito formula to the case of functionals. So we don't have just functions of the current state uh, of a process, but we have functionals of um, the whole path of a process at a certain time. Moreover, this is a pathwise formula that is, here the functional is applied to a path, to a trajectory, and not to a stochastic process. But the formula is exactly the same uh, that the one we, we all know in a stochastic calculus. And uh, here, this object, it is called the Folmer integral, and it is defined as a limit of Riemann sums as we see. Okay, so, um, so the market model will be just uh, the metric space of Cadillac functions with the sub norm. And um, so each, uh, any event omega will represent a possible trajectory of the stock prices. And um, okay. So we, we could consider trading strategies as a, a tri triples um, composed of uh, an initial investment um, and two processes which are the dynamic uh, stock position 
which uh, models the quantity of the stock uh, that I will uh, hold in my portfolio, and uh, a process psi, which models the quantity of, uh, could, let's say, riskless uh, assets. And uh, here we could ask, uh, what is a, a self-financing trading strategy? Because um, in the um, stochastic uh, framework, we have uh, the equation that I showed uh, at the beginning, but here we are in an analytical framework, and we don't know how to define in continuous time self-financing trading strategies. And then how, how to, to define their gain. So this is the first result, where if we consider um, the processes, the adapted CADLAG uh, processes, which are, the, which are um, the vertical derivatives of some uh, regular functionals, then there is uh, a way uh, to define uh, explicitly the, their gain as uh, a Folmer integral, which is equal to a limit of Riemann sums. Moreover, um, we can show that um, these uh, strategies are in some way pathways uh, self-financing strategies and uh, this, the bond position will be given by this formula. Yes, along, it, yes, it, exactly. Omega is a path, it's not a process, it's a Cadillac function. So the, the integral is along, uh, yes. Uh, this is an example. If, the, if phi is uh, of that form, we know that it exists. But uh, okay, gener in general, no. But here we, we at least uh, we, can, we can see that for a class, uh, a specific class of uh, trading strategies, the gain exists. And moreover, the, the strategies are self-financing because, because they can be approximated by um, discrete time trading strategies, which are self-financing by construction. No, and uh, the filtration is just the, the canonical one. I mean, the, the one generated by the canonical process on the space of Cadillac paths. So uh, it just means that you know the path up to T if you know FT. Mm. Uh, okay, let's jump the proof because we don't have time. And then, an important uh, and interesting result can be um, the following one. So we denote QA of pi, the set of uh, Cadillac function which uh, have a quadratic, finite quadratic variation, which is also absolutely, absolutely continuous. And then if we consider a path dependent claim, um, which is uh, continuous in the subnorm, and if we take a regular functional which sol solves the following uh, functional PDE, then uh, we know that uh, if the, um, the path of the stock prices belong to, to some uh, Q A tilde of pi, then we know exactly the tracking error at maturity of the delta hedging strategy. 
so which is given by this formula. So uh, in particular, if this, the trajectory of stock prices belongs to QA, where A is the same, which we see in the functional PDE, then the delta edging strategies will, rep will replicate exactly the, the option at maturity. So this is the counterpart of the pricing equation in black and shows uh, where we have uh, non-path dependent options, so we have functions, but uh, this is the counterpart for path dependent options, and not only because here we are pathwise. We, don't, we are not uh, in a probabilistic model. Okay, let's jump the proof. And now, okay, now we consider the case of a hedger. So a hedger um, choose, chooses a model, a model, he needs a model in order to price and build the, the trading strategies. So uh, we choose, um, for example, a generalized Black and Scholes model. And um, here, um, if we take uh, a payoff H, which is uh, possibly path dependent, um, we have a Martingale representation formula, which gives us the um, replicating strategies, which is given by the vertical derivative of the value functional. This is uh, in the paper of Content Fournier 2012. And, uh, okay. And so we know that uh, in, the bla in the Black Scholes world, we have a replicating strategies, strategy which is given by a delta hedge. Then the problem uh, is, if, uh, if you want to sell a path-dependent derivative with claim H at maturity T, and so you use your model to compute the price and to compute the hedging strategy, but then you trade according, not according to a stochastic pro process, but you trade according to the realized price, prices on the market. So you apply your strategy taking as input uh, the prices then what is your performance relatively to the claim that you want to hedge at maturity? Okay, so we just make an assumption on the market. We assume that uh, this, the trajectories of uh, stock prices have finite quadratic variation, which is absolutely continuous, and then we can rewrite it in this way. Um, so we define uh, the delta hedge robust if uh, when the model volatility overestimates the market volatility, then the value of the replicating portfolio will uh, overestimate, will overreplicate the option at maturity. This is the definition of robustness, where the not notice that the um, replicating portfolio is applied to omega, which is the actual price trajectory. Then um, we see that uh, in the case that it exists regular functionals that price prices the option and it satisfies this condition, that is the second de vertical derivative is positive, then the strategy is robust. It's robust, and uh, not only, but we also have the, the explicit expression of the, trading stra of the um, tracking error at maturity. So we see that it depends much on the second vertical derivative and uh, the difference between the model volatility and the market volatility. Uh, we don't have time. Um, okay, but here we have to know that it exists a regular functional that prices the option. But if we don't know, what can we say? So if um, we don't know it, we can still prove robustness if we assume 
a convex hypothesis uh, on the um, structure of the, um, of the option, which is uh, convexity of the real map uh, written here. Okay, this is a, con a condition that gives us uh, robustness of the delta hedge. And, um, but then we are also able to prove uh, the existence of a regular function that uh, prices the option. Not actually the C12 result that uh, we would uh, like to have, but we prove uh, the existence of a C02 regular functional by making uh, an hypothesis of um, uniformly vertical smoothness of the payoff, which is, uh, which is given by, by smoothness of this function, of this real map, which is the, um, if H is uh, the payout, we assume smoothness with respect to a jump um, made at any time. We, we compute uh, H on omega with the jump. Okay, a jump, uh, uh, if I make a jump here, then the path will, the jump will be prolonged uh, up to capital T. Um, okay, in the, special in the special case where the option depends only on a finite number of, uh, of prices, then uh, the functional will also be C12. Um, I think that, uh, yes, I will cut. I will just show you two examples. So the, f the most common example of path-dependent derivative is uh, an Asian uh, call option. So in the case of the Asian call, we already know uh, by the literature that it exists a regular functional which gives us the price. In particular, the functional it is, is written as a classical function of two state variables which solves a Cauchy problem, so a classical PDE. But uh, this Cauchy problem is a special case of, uh, of the functional PDE that we saw at the beginning. Because if we write the functional in this way and we compute Thanks very much, Kanya. Uh, I think you should probably use this. Are there questions or comments? It wasn't like the easiest thing that was put on us today, so you should excuse them for this. But there's, there's, there's a question. I mean, only if we have time, because I'm to totally ignorant of this. But if I understand uh, Marinacci's question, can I 
I don't understand the answer. If you change the sigma algebra from that one to another one, do you get the existence result? Or do you need very specific properties of that sigma algebra? The functional, the non-anticipative functional is defined as, a f as, a, as adapted to the canonical filtration. So if you change the filtration, you change the definition of function and you change uh, the framework, actually. So, yes. So if you change the algorithm, you need to change, I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Before. Yes. Yes. Sorry? Uh, no, actually, here we don't uh, we don't take uh, into account uh, uh, subjective assumption of the market, anything, because the filtration is the canonical filtration. It means that it is generated by all Cadillac paths. Uh, yeah, but I would have had a very, very similar question about uh, how uh, the general idea relates to the choice of P, right? Which I suppose is one way of phrasing the question. Right, because at the beginning you said that you, you kind of voiced the fact that you clearly have a problem of choosing P, right? And it wasn't entirely clear how the development just uh, would, you know... Uh, just given a probability-free framework that is uh, here probability doesn't come into play, but, but still, if we take a probabilistic model which, uh, where the stochastic process satisfies the assumption with probability one, then you can apply it pathwise. So, so you can take uh, many different models which uh, satisfies still uh, the same assumption, but which is uh, an analytical assumption on the, on the trajectories. So, so the, the actual problem of choosing P doesn't even arise? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So, okay. Are there more questions? Well, if not, let's thank Kandya again. And I <laughs> hope there's going to be coffee. <laughs> if the traffic jam cleared, we will have coffee. Otherwise, we'll invent something with caffeine. In. So uh, we, we actually had planned a short break. I suggest we make it a bit longer and just uh, start again in 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes from now. Thank you. <laughs>